realm of true crime, few names incite intrigue like Frankie Zarella, a figure shrouded in mystery, a character steeped in controversy, his actions chilling, his motives unsettling. In the series, Narcissistic True Crimes of Frankie Zarella, we delve into the depths of his twisted psyche. Brace yourself as we navigate through a labyrinth of haunting tales. Each story, a chilling testament to the dark side of human nature. Each crime, a disturbing display of abuse, manipulation, and narcissism. As we unearth the eerie details of Frankie's crimes, we invite you to join us on this journey. A journey that will leave you questioning everything you thought you knew about humanity. This is not for the faint-hearted. This is narcissistic true crimes of Frankie Zarella. Welcome to the dark side. Welcome back to Narcissistic True Crimes of Wilton Manor, where we delve into the harrowing journey of Frankie Zarella and the sinister web of abuse he weaves. In this episode, we trace Frankie's chilling descent from the initial stages of love bombing to the dark depths of the devaluation phase. As his victims are lured in by his charm and affection, they soon find themselves ensnared in a cycle of manipulation and cruelty. Join us as we uncover the insidious tactics employed by Frankie to exert control and dominance over those who fall prey to his twisted desires. In the chilling narrative of Narcissistic True Crimes of Wilton Manor, the fall from grace of Frankie Zarella unfolds with eerie precision, revealing the sinister web of abuse he orchestrates. It begins innocuously enough, with Frankie portraying himself as a charming and compassionate partner, drawing his victims into his web of deceit. As the relationship progresses, however, cracks begin to appear in Frankie's facade. He subtly begins to devalue his victims, employing insidious tactics to undermine their sense of self-worth. This slow descent from the pedestal is calculated, designed to break down their defenses and assert his dominance over them. One of Frankie's most manipulative tactics involves recounting tales of his past relationship with Rob, his first love. He paints himself as a reformed man, molded by past mistakes, yet his actions betray his words. By highlighting Rob's betrayal and his own supposed transformation, Frankie leverages these stories to gain sympathy and control over his current victims. Frankie's accusations serve as twisted confessions, further deepening the psychological hold he has over his victims. He projects his own faults onto them, gaslighting them into questioning their own reality. This insidious manipulation leaves his victims feeling confused and powerless, further entrenching them in his web of deceit. As Frankie's manipulation intensifies, he assumes a moral high ground, casting himself as the victim in his own narrative. He alternates between moments of affection and cruelty, leaving his victims trapped in a constant state of uncertainty and fear. This cycle of abuse becomes increasingly vicious, with Frankie reveling in his victim's suffering and taunting them with false promises of reconciliation. Frankie's manipulation tactics escalate to new heights as he gains access to his victim's phones, exploiting their privacy and trust. Under the guise of maintaining an open relationship, he demands unfettered access to their devices, secretly embedding his fingerprint and installing tracking software to monitor their every move. While his victims sleep, Frankie seizes their phones, scouring through their personal information and accounts to gather sensitive data. In the dead of night, Frankie becomes a silent intruder, extracting passwords and private information from his victims' phones. With calculated precision, he fabricates conversations, impersonating his victims to his own device. By manipulating these dialogues, Frankie crafts a narrative of his choosing casting his victims in a negative light and sowing seeds of doubt and suspicion among their peers. The open relationship that Frankie imposes is not a gesture of freedom, but a cunning trap designed to tighten his control over his victims. Under the guise of exploration and trust, he coerces them into agreeing to his terms, using their compliance as further evidence of their submission. Frankie's manipulation knows no bounds as he exploits their vulnerabilities and insecurities, leaving them feeling trapped and powerless. As Frankie's gaslighting tactics intensify, he employs intermittent reinforcement to further entrench his victims in the cycle of abuse. He alternates between extreme highs and lows, plunging them into despair before offering fleeting moments of affection and reassurance. This roller coaster of emotions strengthens the trauma bond between Frankie and his victims, 
making it increasingly difficult for them to break free from his grip. After breaking his victims down to their breaking point, Frankie tries to lure them back in with false promises of reconciliation. Using silent treatment and withholding affection, he manipulates them into believing they almost had the relationship back on track. He reassures them, claiming he can never lie, hurt, or cheat on them, referencing what he did to Rob as a supposed catalyst for change. As Frankie's manipulation reaches its peak, he resorts to a tactic known as reactive abuse, exploiting his victims' vulnerabilities to paint them as the aggressors. He pushes them to their breaking point, subjecting them to relentless emotional torment until they finally snap and react to his abuse. With hidden cameras strategically placed throughout the house, Frankie captures these moments of vulnerability, distorting them to fit his narrative of control and dominance. Reactive abuse occurs when Frankie pushes his victims to the brink, manipulating them into reacting with anger or frustration. By provoking these reactions, he casts them as the instigators of conflict, further gaslighting and eroding their sense of reality. Despite being the true aggressor, Frankie skillfully shifts the blame onto his victims, leaving them feeling confused and isolated. Using the videos of these reactions, Frankie launches a smear campaign against his victims, painting them as unstable and dangerous. He manipulates the footage, cutting and editing it to suit his narrative, further distorting the truth and eroding his victims' credibility. With each smear, he cuts off any remaining support his victims may have, isolating them further and making them wholly dependent on him for validation and companionship. Frankie's tactics of isolation and manipulation leave his victims grappling with a profound sense of loneliness and despair. He systematically cuts off their connections to friends and family, convincing them that they are unlikable and unworthy of love. With each passing day, his victims become increasingly dependent on him for validation and support, trapped in a cycle of abuse from which escape seems impossible. Who's mad? Who's mad? You stole it. Why did I steal it? Why did I steal it? Would you like to search me? Would you like to search me? So, it's all, so I don't have it on me. So I don't have so it on So it's in the house. So it's in the house. So you, you're so holding me for what reason? For what reason? Okay, then let me okay, leave. Then let me leave. Don't grab my phone. Don't grab my phone. Stop. Technically, that's a soul. that's a soul. John. John. Don't do drugs. Don't do drugs. Relax. 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 In the wake of Frankie's insidious tactics, his victims are left grappling on the brink of despair, their sense of self-worth shattered, and their spirits broken. They are isolated and alone, trapped in a nightmare of Frankie's making, with no clear path to freedom. As the episode closes, the chilling reality of narcissistic abuse becomes painfully clear, leaving its victims teetering on the edge of oblivion.